Hey, it's DJ Rawstar. I'm hanging out here with Tony from Mesa, back to the beach. And uh, we are, if you look down, actually on the beach. It's pretty cool. You're not playing today, but you're here just, uh, I guess, hanging out like us, huh? Yeah, man. I'm a fan like everybody else. Anybody uh, here today you were especially excited to see? Um, suicide Machines, for sure, because I haven't seen them since we toured with them in 2003 on Warp Tour. And I was a huge fan growing up, and we talked about this earlier. The, what is it? Um, what's the record called? Destruction by Definition? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, excited to see them. I've seen Less Than Jerry a couple months ago, but it's awesome seeing them every time, you know. But uh, yeah, man, just here to see see the bands do the scene. Yeah, and hopefully if this is a reoccurring festival, maybe you'll make an appearance next year. That would be awesome, too. Rumor is it's going to be a reoccurring festival. I'll pick that up later. Um, so hopefully, yeah, hopefully next year we fit the bill. We were supposed to, we were talking about doing it this year, and then I think it turned into a ska fest. And I mean, we have... We have some ska influence and more like reggae influence, but uh, if you look at the lineup, it sort of made sense to not be on it, I guess. I don't know. So Maybe will, next year. Will 2018 be a, a big year for MEST, or are we going to have to wait till 2019 for some big things to happen? Well, how much? How many months are left in the year? Uh, it's like uh, eight. We're only three months in. Yeah, right? like seven months yeah. left. Three months in, right? Well, we're almost five months in. We got some time. Yeah, um, yeah so... Um, we haven't officially announced it, and this is recording ahead of schedule. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do a new record. We've been we talked about it for a while, and I've just been writing songs nonstop and for a couple of years now. And I was gonna put them out on sort of a side project thing where I was sort of letting people know, like, hey, like if Mess did a record, these would be the songs. I'm writing another punk rock record, um, just because I wasn't sure if the guys really wanted to do another record, and. Uh, and I just talked to everybody, and they were like, yeah, man, why not? It's been fucking 12 years or something, yeah. I think. Um, this is a big deal, because you're not just talking about you and, and some friends. This is the real lineup. Yeah, yeah, we're going to do original lineup, me, Nick, Matt, and Jer. Um, we've actually already started tracking some songs. Um, and it's it's a little bit, it, it's different, um, not music-wise, it's different. The recording process and writing process is different now than it was back in the day, because obviously we all lived in Chicago. I live out here. Nick lives in Detroit, the guys live in, uh, Matt and Jerry live in Chicago. But thanks for the fucking, you know, via the internet, it's very easy to collaborate through songs and I could send them stuff and take notes and they can write their parts. And, you know, so it's like, it's virtually the same thing. I mean, that was how we wrote records back in the day too. You know, I would write a slew of fucking songs and ideas, then bring it to the band. And me and Nick would work with it for a little bit. And then, you know, Matt and Jerry would come in and sort of write their parts and come up with ideas. So it, it's essentially going to be, you know, the exact same thing, it's just a little bit wow. different. And I'm sure before we go and record, we'll do a little bit of pre-production together. But um, Would it be the, it's never been half and half, but more so where you would probably do a majority, but then Jeremy would sing like three or four songs like usual? I'm hoping um, to have Jerry write a couple songs on the record, we'll see. Um, but what I am doing on a lot of my songs is leaving parts open for him. Okay, that's cool. So, like on uh, one, the song that we already recorded, which is going to be our first song that we released, is a song called Masquerade. Um, I had him sing the, like, the leads in the second verse for like the first two lines, then we go back and forth. So it's very much like a song like that's me fun. and Jerry yeah. back and forth. Yeah, because um, it's sort of like when I saw the, uh, or heard the new Blink record, I was wondering how they were going to do it with Matt being the new guy and trying to make it sound like a Blink record. And they were smart. I mean, if you listen to every song on that record, Matt and Mark both sing on every song, and I was like, that's really fucking cool the way they did that. So I sort of want to incorporate that concept a little bit more, because, you know, Harmony's live, I fucking love Harmony's live. And I love them on record, then I love doing it live. So I sort of thought it'd be cool to maybe, even on my songs that I write, incorporate Jer into it a little yeah. bit more. And, and when I'm making up harmonies, go, okay, well, I can sing this high part, you sing the low part, you know, and sort of just use our voices together. I think it'd be cool. So it's the early stages, but you do have a song already Ready to go, Masquerade. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, we've already tracked it, um, and it was just sort of like a song to sort of show people, just to give people a concept of what. Um, and everybody that's heard it is like fucking stoked on it. Like everybody. Is it darker like the later years or poppier like the early years? I want to say it's a mixture of both. It's because uh, it's not super popping. And it's not super dark. Okay. It's like a no. just a good melodic punk rock song. It's great. And like lyrically, it's this cool concept. Which I, I mean, I don't have to go into detail because that might be boring for some people. But um, I just sort of compared the idea of like I looked into like these. Well, now I'm gonna describe it after I just said that. Go for it. Right? <laughs> Deep analyzation. So uh, it's a song called Masquerade, and it's the the concept of I started reading up on like old school masquerades, 
and how it would be like the peasants and the rich people partying together and they'd all wear these masks and they could party together this one night and nobody would know who the other person was but it was a way for everybody just to get along and not judge and it was I started reading about these um, very legendary ones where sort of bad things happen not in the sense that I was looking for bad things but like these iconic ones where this woman was like dancing around and she knocked over a fucking all the candles and the place burnt up and shit like that so I literally reference these very famous old school uh, masquerades where these tragic tragic events sort of happen and then it's the concept of using the time era when masquerades would happen and then going out to a bar in this day and age when you go out and you meet somebody that you don't know and then end up doing your thing that night and waking up next to the person really not knowing who they are and that's sort of like that shit happened back in the day and there yeah. was a line that people would say once um, like if somebody would recognize somebody else um, they would go up to him and go hey I know who you are do you know who I am because they'd recognize somebody and so there's a line in there that sort of references that there's a line that references the big fire masquerade that happened and um, it's sort of like taking a, a an old school version and uh, modernizing it if that's the right word yeah. to this day and age of I lived in LA for a couple of years and I was single and you go out and you meet people that you don't really know. When you wake up in the morning, you're like, I know you, I know you, do you know me? You know, it's that sort of same concept. And like people that have heard it are super stoked on it. So we'll that's, see. That's Hopefully cool. everybody likes it. Let's, let's talk about the beer. Oh yeah, so um, that's a good, good call. Uh, we finally made our own beer. If you don't know about our band name, Mest, it is, uh, you just take Milwaukee's Best, put the M over the B, made it up when I was 15 because Bush was already taken. <laughs> and that was the other cheap beer that we drank. Um, and so we finally, uh, with this company in Chicago called 350 Brewing, we combined with them and we made up our own beer. And it's been served like at um, shows that we played in Chicago, two different shows we played. People seem to love it. And then uh, that company is going to can it for us this summer. So you'll be able to buy messed up ale. We don't know where yet though, but like somewhere you'll be able to buy it. I, I think we're going to do like a delivery sort of fucking thing. You okay. know, like I guess you can deliver alcohol these days. I didn't you know. can, yeah. Postmates, yeah. DoorDash. Well, no, I think you can actually order online and shit. I'm not sure how you confirm that you're 21. I don't know. We'll find out. But all you 18 year olds out there. And what does it taste like? Um, okay, so I like, I like IPAs, but I like the lighter side of IPAs. So it's sort of like a very, very light IPA. All right. Not too harsh. You know, like that bitter taste you get? Yeah. There's a little bit less of that, a little more, I wouldn't say like fruity because there's no fruit in it, but it's just a little bit lighter. It's more like combining a beer and an IPA together. So come in the summer. Yes. Okay, cool. Before we go, you've told this story to me once before, but I, I feel like most Mess fans don't know this story, but I, I was there, I saw it happen. I want you to retell the, the Green Day story where you sabotaged the, uh, the oh, show. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> It's you, you told it uh, years ago on my show, but I feel like maybe the Bionic Buzz audience I wants to hear this. I legitimately like forget about this because like, I always bring it up every time I see you. No, it's you so know, like, cool. Green Day is obviously one of our favorite bands. Yeah. I think both of us, and I think they were the band that sort of made most Everything. of this. <laughs> yeah, um, we were doing a festival um, where it was the tour. It was them. Uh, it was Blink and them. Blink, Pop them, his ass. Blink, yeah. and I think uh, the opening band that. Day was um, Shaves the Day or Jimmy World? Shaves the Day. Yeah. It was Jimmy World and then we were going back yeah. and forth. Um, and then so what they did was they held a festival inside the same venue early on in the day. Which is really weird that they did that, but it worked totally. out. Yeah, it was fucking awesome. Um, and it was like us, oh, Sugar Cult, Unwritten Law, Good Charlotte, um, every band you could think of in that you know era. Um, so we played our show, which was rad, by the way. Side note, D. Snyder came on and we played. We're not going to take it I together. Remember, yeah. He called me up and I asked if he could come on stage and sing that song, and I was like, sure, man. Um, but he did cut our set short because we were only like five songs in, and he's like, I want to do it. I want to go on now. And we're like, dude, we have like 20 minutes left. What the fuck? So once we did that song, we had to stop. Oh. And we were the only band that day that got like the one more song chant going. And on the radio the next day, they were saying that we stole the show from everybody that day, uh -oh. including Green Day and Blink, which I was like, that's fucking amazing. But long story short, Green Day does the thing where they bring people up on stage. So we're side stage watching the band, and he's like, does anybody know how to play guitar? Anybody know how to play bass? For the song Knowledge, they do every show, yeah. yeah. And everybody raises their hand in the crowd, and I look over at everybody, and it's like all the guys from like Charlotte, Sugar Cold, and Law, and I look at everybody, and I go, and everybody's like doing this shit, you know, like the peer pressure fucking <laughs> friends egging you on. And as a joke, I did this, and Timmy Chunks, their guitar tech, um, looked over at me, and he was like, fucking don't. Oh, wow. 
And I was like, I'm just kidding, man. I'm just kidding. And then I started thinking about it, and I was like, when am I ever going to get this fucking chance again? Yeah. And I looked at everybody, and was like, do it, do it. And I was at that stage in my life where I would, didn't give a shit about anything. Yeah. I would never do that now. <laughs> and like I waited till he looked to the side, and I just fucking booked it out oh. there, ran up to Durnt. And I was like, I know how to play bass. And he was like, okay. Puts the bass on me, played the song. And then when we were done, they made us like run off the stage and do a yeah. flip into the crowd. And I remember, I think Billy Joe even called me like a fucking poser or something wow. like that. Which was, yeah, which was great. Um, <laughs> I was like, thanks, bud. Uh, and then I went to come back in and they were like, nope, you're done. Wow. But Brian, I don't know if you guys know, uh, so Warped Door back in the day, I'm sure you, both of you guys went back in the day. Oh, yeah. There was the Teal stage and then there was Brian's stage. Yeah. Brian was part of that tour. Um, he knew who I was. And so he found me uh, outside and was like, hey, dude, he was like, just don't let anybody see you. Here you go. Here's another pass. He got back in. And I went back in, yeah, and just put my hood up. And so I got to What a day. Mess, D. Snyder, played with Green Day. Dude, it was, yeah, it was one for the fucking memory book. But uh, I, got, I know somebody recorded that D. Snyder shit somewhere. I got to see it someday. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. Look forward to the beer and new music.